I feel like something just opened right up in the room. Do you? And it is joy. I feel like the Lord wants to release even a fresh baptism of joy on our lives. I feel like He wants to whet our appetites and then call us into the lifestyle to maintain it and cultivate it. <laughs> anyway, how's everybody doing? Well, good. I want to ask. I want to ask for that. Okay, we don't want it just to stop with worship. We want to move into this. I feel like we're all just one steady flow this uh, afternoon, and we want to ask for the joy of the Lord to be upon us. And uh, um, I'm even stirred. I'm going to be preaching on John the Baptist, and I'm stirred outside of Jesus. John the Baptist was the, one of the happiest men that have ever lived. And uh, uh, the joy that he walked in, the power that he touched of touching the joy of the Lord. I want to tell you it's powerful. It's glorious, and I believe it's, the, it's one of the most powerful dynamics to, to give ourselves to God is the power of joy. So I just want you to go ahead and stand real quickly. I want to pray for you. I want you to open up your hands. <clears throat> We're going to pray for joy and ask for the Holy Spirit to come today. He's already here, but we want more, Lord. Amen? We want fresh waves, don't we, Jesus? <laughs> we want fresh waves, Holy Spirit. So God, I just ask you right now, all over this whole room, right now, Father, I ask you that you would open up heaven today and that you would release supernatural joy, God. Father, I pray, God, that rivers would burst out of the wilderness, God. I pray that deserts, God, would blossom forth. I speak that Isaiah 35. I just want to speak that over you. I speak Isaiah 35. Father, I ask you right now, I want you just to repeat after me. Just say, God, Father God, fill me with the joy of the Holy Spirit from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Release your joy. Release your joy. Release your joy. In the name of Jesus, release your joy. So I say right now, Father, release your joy in this house, and I say be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let fresh life and fresh grace and fresh power and fresh anointing touch your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We take authority over all oppression. We break your power. We take authority over all depression. We break your power. We take authority over lying spirits. We break your power over tormenting spirits. We break your power. We say freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Father, we bless you. We bless you, God. 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 I'm going to count to three, and I just want to release this scream. I believe that there's going to be freedom even released this afternoon. Some of you have come in here oppressed, depressed tormented and I want to tell you there's freedom that will free your spirit up to receive this conference so right now I just want on the count of three we're just going to cry out to God with a scream one two three oh. release it God freedom 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 deliverance deliverance Deliverance! Freedom! Yeah, let's just give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Praise God. You can be seated if you can. I finally found where I belong. I finally found where I belong. I was just back here, you know, all intense. I've been... In a vein, we've been just finished our GBF, Global Bridegroom Fast, so I've been in fasting mode, Mr. Intense Man, getting geared up to preach on John the Baptist, and these guys just break out an oracle, man, and all of a sudden, I just get filled with the Holy Spirit, and everything changes. It's like, whoa, but it's the same message, but now you get that, that heartbeat of Jesus that releases the very message, and even when we call people to, to the reality of, of intercession and call people to the forerunner ministry, the allurement and the message and the heart from which we preach and we call people into it as a heart fascinated by the beauty of God and filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. That's why people would travel. That's why a, a homeschooling mom would take their five children, walk five hours out in the desert to watch a burning and a shining lamp 
burn out in the wilderness. This man was on fire. This man was full of joy. This man was fearless. This man was full of the joy of the Lord. And it was a people enamored saying, this man is getting joyful and he's getting happy and the things that cause us to get happy doesn't cause him to get happy what is it that he's tapped into that is bringing him such joy that's bringing him such gladness that's bringing him such power to walk above the very spirit of the age in which we're living in it was the power of John the Baptist's life to live fascinated lovesick however you want to call it the man was filled with the Holy Spirit and I'm telling you right now, the Lord, I, I feel it in my heart. I've been feeling it all week that the Lord is really wanting to sound an alarm on the forerunner ministry this afternoon. I've been burning in my spirit concerning the ministry of John the Baptist, concerning the forerunner ministry, because a lot of, I didn't even get to see all the people that stood up for uh, the, the, the Anna calling, but I want to tell you right now that the, there are many, many, many messengers, for, people with a forerunner spirit on their life who are sitting in this room and who will hear this hear this CD and I want to tell you right now this is who you are and you are called to prepare the way of the Lord for the coming of the Lord your words and your lifestyle touching and this is what it comes down to it's the power of joy do you know that it's the power of joy because when we mostly think of John the Baptist we usually think of a grumpy man wearing ugly clothes eating horrible food And I'm here to tell you, outside of Jesus, because you know Psalm 45 says that Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness more than all his companions. <laughs> How about to have the anointing of gladness on your life? And it says Jesus had it more than anybody. <laughs> but I want to tell you, let's just, I'm looking at Luke 1. I'm just starting here. Let's, I just want to look at a few of these places because I want to get to Matthew 11 today, but I feel like the spirit in which I want to release this message, I want to get us connected that there is something that is pow more powerful than the spirit of this age. There is something more powerful than entertainment. There is something more powerful than living according to the God of our stomach. There's something more powerful, and I'm here to tell you, it's the beauty of Jesus, and it's being filled with the Holy Spirit. There's something more powerful than the legitimate pleasures of this world, and it's called the Holy Spirit teaching and bringing us into the beauty of Jesus. The Holy Spirit guiding us and taking us into the glorious beauty of Jesus Christ. It's glorious and it's powerful, and I believe that the Lord wants to strike your heart. I believe He wants to stun your heart. I believe He wants to break oppression and depression, break off sadness and break off the religious hold on another day into touching something on the inside out. Amen? So I just want to read a couple of passages. Not mostly that I want to teach it. I just want to read, I just want to read it. Looking at Luke 1, and we have Zacharias. It's an old man, a priest. His wife Elizabeth is barren. And he shows up in verse 9. According to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense, whom he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then Gabriel, an angel of the Lord, appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call him John. Now here it is, verse 14. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. <laughs> Meaning when this, when this child comes out, there's going to be a holy rejoicing that's going to break out in the whole community. This, this son is going to bring gladness to his people. It's going to break out with literal gladness. And then verse 15, then we begin to look into the very calling of John and how the Lord was going to sustain John and what John's call in life. Verse 15, and he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He says, in essence, he goes, he's not going to drink the wine of this world because I have a wine set apart for John. <laughs> he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Look at this. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. My goodness. And he will go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children 
and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said, how do I know? And he says, I'm Gabriel. Don't you know who I am? I'm shutting your mouth until the baby comes. That's my paraphrase of it. He goes, don't you know who I am? I'm Gabriel. And he tells them this. I want to tell you right now, God wants to begin to release a bursting forth of joy in our spirit. And the joy is being filled with the Holy Spirit and the revelation of Jesus. Because I want to make it clear today, and we're going to look at it in Matthew 11. I want to tell you, it's a lie. I, I don't like all the movies that we've seen portraying John the Baptist as mostly a grumping man. Yeah, he had weird clothes and he ate weird food. But guys, I'm telling you, what will sustain somebody to live out in a desert, in a wilderness community, in a wilderness reality for 18 years to spend the majority of his life in hiddenness, to come on the scene for one short period of history, to say, I've come for one reason, and that's to get people ready for the coming of the Messiah, to proclaim words that get them ready, but more than just proclaiming words, the very lifestyle that I'm living in is an open invitation to a generation that if they embrace the lifestyle I'm living in, they will both be prepared to receive Jesus, per, be prepared to receive the Messiah, so that when He comes, they'll be ready to receive Him. That's what we're going to look at at Matthew 11, that John the Baptist, I want to tell you, the man was gone, lost in love with Jesus. What do you think would sustain him out there for 18 years? And our call today is, I'm calling as many as would hear my voice and the Spirit would bear witness. I'm calling us all, not to a literal wilderness, but to a wilderness of prayer, of fasting, of giving, and of living in a certain way, of breaking away all the props of our life to get us before the Lord. And to begin to do this, to transfer our appetites and our pleasures of this age and tap into the pleasures of knowing and touching God. That's why the Lord brings us to the wilderness. I was looking in Deuteronomy chapter 8 today, and if I'm, I don't have notes for you, so you're just going to have to work real hard taking notes and then get the CD. But in Deuteronomy chapter 8, the Lord brings Israel out of Egypt... And he says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he says, I brought, you out of the I brought you out of Egypt and I bring you into the wilderness to test you, to humble you, to see what was in your heart, to see whether you would obey my commandments or not. And then he says a few other things and he says, so that you would know that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is what the Lord's saying in Deuteronomy chapter 8. He says, this is my purpose for calling you out of Egypt. It's to transfer your appetites. And it's to, trans, it's to transfer, it's to bring you finding your main pleasures from living of the things of this world and to tap you in to the pleasures of receiving the words of God. That, are y'all with me? Are you? Because you know what? Each and every one of us in this room, we need a massive surge. We need a massive realignment of our whole life, of our whole pleasure-seeking, everything that we're after, the Lord wants to take us into the, a wilderness reality and tap us in to true joy. I'm telling you to tap you into real pleasure, to tap you into real glory, of real power, that, that power and that joy that literally walks on the mountains of this world, that is not encumbered in the things of this world. Now turn with me quickly to John 3. John chapter 3. Praise God. Finally found where I belong. <laughs> I love the presence of God, don't you? That's what I told everybody when I first got saved. Got saved dramatically 11 years ago. And that's what happened. I got saved and we saw a move of God. And I said, the one thing that happened was I got addicted to.